Welcome to Sunrise Meditations on the beautiful and serene Enders Island. Today is Tuesday of the second week in Ordinary Time, and I'm your host, Deacon Francis Valier. Alexio Divina is from the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 2, verses 23 through 28. And let us begin our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. And now let us listen and attend to our gospel passage proclaimed by Michael Toole. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. As Jesus was passing through a field of grain on the Sabbath, his disciples began to make a path while picking the heads of grain. At this the Pharisees said to him, Why are they doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? He said to them, Have you never read what David did? when he was in need and he and his companions were hungry. How he went into the house of God when Abiathar was high priest and ate the bread of offering that only the priests could lawfully eat and shared it with his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for the man, not man for the Sabbath. That is why the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. In today's Gospel reading according to St. Mark, we have a third confrontation between Jesus and the Pharisees on the place of the law in people's lives. Jesus' disciples are accused of violating the Sabbath by picking ears of corn as they walked through a cornfield. Stealing was not involved. As such, gleaning that these disciples performed, especially by the hungry poor, was something that was tolerated. But the law forbade reaping on the Sabbath. One could hardly call what the disciples were doing as reaping. But with the casuistic mind of the Pharisees and teachers of the law, the bias was on the side of safety. The perfect observer of the law would not do anything that could even be regarded in the slightest as a violation. A contemporary example of this would be a follower of the old law would never take an elevator on the Shabbat, on the Sabbath, because Jewish law requires that Jews abstain from operating electrical switches on the Sabbath. Jesus solves the issue by appealing to the Hebrew Testament, which, of course, the Pharisees recognized as the Word of God. He reminded them how King David and his followers, because they were hungry, went into the house of God and took the loaves of offering, even though only the priests were allowed to eat them. Jesus then enunciates the principle that The Sabbath was made for people, and not people for the Sabbath. And secondly, that Jesus is master of the Sabbath. The first principle is a very important one, namely that all laws are for people and not vice versa. They are not ends in themselves, and moral perfection is not in their literal observance. The hunger of David and his men transcended a religious regulation that only the priests could eat the bread of offering. For the Jews of Jesus' time, virtue was in perfect observance of the law, of obligation. For Jesus, observance of the law was only perfect when it was for the good of others and oneself. The second principle was that Jesus, as the Son of God, was not bound by human laws, however lofty their motive. 
we would do well to remember those principles in the living out of our Christian faith. It is possible to lead rule-centered Christian lives rather than love and people-centered lives. There is only one law in our faith, love one another as I have loved you. Even God will not violate that law because God is love. Any law which, in a particular situation, does not serve this primary law can be set aside and should be set aside. Positive laws are necessary for smooth functioning in society, but they are never absolute. Amen. After our closing prayer, we read the scripture passage and contemplate the message. Concentrate on a thought that comes to you, a verse or even a word that touches you, and ask the Holy Spirit to show you how it pertains to you and how you may spiritually grow closer to him. And let us complete our divine reading with a closing prayer. And let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by your sacred word one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be upon you always, and may his blessings fill your day with joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.